antimicrobial resistance in small ruminants. According to the 20th census, India ranks second in the population of goats and third position in sheep, holding a po total population of 148.88 million and 74 million of goats and sheep respectively. The sheep and goat, they are susceptible to many infectious diseases like bacterial, viral, fungal and protozoal infections, which we all know. One is to prevent these diseases and the other is therapeutic management of these diseases. Therapeutic management means we have to make use of antimicrobials for successful management of sheep and goat that are suffering from the infectious diseases. Now to know what these antimicrobial substances actually are, they are nothing but the chemical substances that can be natural, synthetic or semi-synthetic origin used either to kill the microorganisms or to inhibit or suppress the growth of microorganisms. We broadly call them as antimicrobials. They can be antibiotics that are used against bacteria. They can be antivirals against viral infections, antifungals against the spores and antiparasitic that can be endoparasitic or ectoparasitic. Among the antimicrobial agents used, antibiotics, they are the most commonly used antimicrobials worldwide. As I said, antimicrobials, they can be either synthetic, semi-synthetic or natural origin. But antibiotics, they are purely obtained from the microorganisms that is a natural source that is used to inhibit the growth or kill the bacteria. We call it as a static and sidle. Here we need to know that all antibiotics are antimicrobials, but all antimicrobials are not antibiotics. Going back to the discovery of first antimicrobial agent, it goes to arsphenamine, which, which was discovered in the year 1908. We call it as a salversin or compound 606 also. This was actually used against syphilis and African trypanosomiasis for its treatment in humans. Coming to the first antibiotic, that is penicillin, as we all know that it was discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming. It is said that when he returned back from the vacation to his laboratory where he was working, he noted that the petri plates that were having Staphylococcus aureus, the growth was inhibited by the molds of penicillium. That shows that then he further declared that the chemical substances which are produced by this penicillium notatum fungi, they were able to inhibit the growth of, growth of Staphylococcus aureus and further he named that antibiotic as penicillin. Based on the antimicrobial activity, we usually classify them as broad spectrum and narrow spectrum. When the antimicrobial activity, the spectrum of the activity or the antimicrobial agent, it is able to act on both gram positive and gram negative. We call them as broad spectrum antimicrobials, which are commonly penicillins, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolones, whereas narrow spectrum antibiotics that can act either on the gram positive organisms or gram negative organisms, but they cannot act on both. We call them as a narrow spectrum. Examples are macrolides and aminoglycosides. In this, we even get an extended spectrum, like they are active against gram negative or gram positive, but they can show its activity against some of the other organisms also such, we call it as a extended spectrum. Next, we classify the antimicrobials based on their action, whether they are able to inhibit the growth or kill the microorganisms. The antimicrobials which are able to inhibit or suppress the growth of microorganisms, we call them as a bacteriostatic that includes sulfonamides, tetracyclines and macrolides. Whereas those antimicrobials that are able to kill the microorganisms, we call them as bactericidal. They are commonly penicillin, cephalosporins, uh, tetracyclines, etc. Based on the mechanism of action also, we categorize the antibiotics. One is those antimicrobial agents or antibiotics that inhibit the cell wall synthesis. The major class that belongs are penicillins, cephalosporins, vancomycin and bacitracin, whereas the antibiotics that inhibit the cell membrane, they are polymyxins, 
um, amphotericin B and histanin, whereas the antibiotics, there are some antimicrobial agents that inhibit the protein synthesis in the microorganisms. We call them as protein synthesis inhibitors. They can inhibit the ribosomes that are two units, 30S and 50S. The antibiotics that inhibit the 30S subunit, they are tetracyclines and aminoglycosides. The most commonly is oxytetracycline that is used in sheep and goat farming and aminoglycosides neomycin. 50S sub subunit, it is inhibited by macrolides, chloramphenicol and streptogramins. Next class is those antibiotics that inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis. One is fluoroquinolones. They act by inhibiting the DNA gyrase that is present in enzyme present in the DNA gyrase. Next is a RNA polymerase inhibitors that is rifampin that is mainly used against the tuberculosis. Next is antibiotics that inhibit the folate synthesis. Examples are sulfonamides and trimethoprin. EMA, that is European Medicines Agency, they categorize the antibiotics into four categories, that is A, B, C, and D. The main purpose of this classification is to provide or promote the responsible use of these antibiotics or antimicrobials both in human and veterinary practice. A means it includes all those antibiotics or the antimicrobials that are unauthorized to be used in veterinary medicine. They cannot be used in food producing animals like sheep and goat. Whereas B group, they are restricted. We call them as a restrict. In this class, we have antibiotics like quinolones, fluoroquinolones, third and fourth generation cephalosporins and polymyxins. Here, these antibiotics which belong to the B group, they are critically important in human medicine and their use in animals should be used, should be restricted only to mitigate the public health or public risk factors. Next is a C group. These antibiotics should be used cautiously. They should be used only when the antibiotics that are belonging to the D or the prudent group, they are not found to be effective against the diseases that are in sheep and goat or other livestock species. Last is a D group that can be used as a first line of treatment in veterinary practice. These drugs have to be used prudently. That means it should not be used unnecessarily and excess administration or prolonged administration of these drugs should be avoided in animals. In this table, we can see A, B and next is a C and D. Here, A group, they are to be avoided. First group, it is limited for human purpose use. Second group, they can be used only for curing for public health issues. Third group, that is a C. When the antibiotics that are found in the D group, they are not found to be effective in diseases that are found in sheep and goat, then we can go for C group categories like aminoglycosides, which you use amicacin, gentamicin, canamycin, neomycin and all. Then amino penicillins, first and second generation uh, cephalosporins can be used, rifampicin and macrolides. It's like azithromycin and all. Next is a D group. They are, they can be used as a first line of treatment in veterinary practice. Commonly, we use our tetracyclines in sheep and goat, chlorotetracycline, oxytetracycline, and tetracycline groups. Natural and penicillin groups like procaine penicillin, benzathine penicillins, and all. Aminoglycosides, spectromycin, sulfidamides like sulfadimidin. These are some of the and nitromimidazoles, that is metronidazole, which is having both antibiotic and antiprotozole effect. This is a table where you can see the classification of the most commonly used antibiotics that are aminoglycosides, cephalosporin, sulfonamides, and macrolides based on their spectrum of activity and type of action, whether it is bactericidal and bacteriostatic. Here we can see aminoglycosides, they are narrow spectrum. They have narrow spectrum of activity, whereas broad spectrum of activity is shown by cephalosporins, penicillins, tetracycline, fluoroquinolones, and sulfonamides. Whereas cidal action, bactericidals, antigroups, they are antibiotics are aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, penicillins, and fluoroquinolones. As I told, sulfonamides, tetracyclines, and microlites, they belong to the bacteriostatic, that is they inhibit or suppress the growth of the 
microorganisms which can be either gram positive or gram negative this is a mechanism of action by which they inhibit the microorganisms which we have discussed in the previous slide in this table here it is a group of antibiotics where it is shown those antibiotics which are in green color they it is synergistic activity means synergistic activity means when we combine two antimicrobial activity antimicrobial drugs the net effect that is got by combining two antimicrobial agents is more than the effect that is seen when individual antibiotics are given we call them as a synergistic activity antagonism that is shown in red color these when using two antibiotics combinedly the net effect that is produced it is less than the individual drug activity that is produced by using individual drugs here we have to remember that bactericidal drugs need to be given with bactericidal only if we are using in combination and bacteriostatic and static should be given together not we should not mix bactericidal with the static we get a antagonistic effect what are the uses of these antimicrobials in sheep and goat one they are used for therapeutic purpose for treating the infectious diseases that are seen in sheep and goat most commonly seen diseases are clostridial infections coming to the bacteria in viral we get ppr or pox infections and blue uh, blue tongue also mastitis it is very common condition in sheep and goat that are used for milk production and for coming to the sub therapeutic purposes that means they are used at the dose less than the optimal dose to increase the production of the sheep and goat and to prevent the outbreak these are some of the antibiotics that are commonly used in sheep and goat penicillin it is a fda approved antibiotic which is commonly used in sheep and goat it is found to be effective in pneumonia cases caused by pastrella multocida ceftriaxone sodium which we use for respiratory infections at the rate of 1.1 to 2.2 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly it needs to be given penicillin the dose is 10 to 12000 international units per kg body weight to be given for 3 to 5 days and neomycin sulfate it is used against e coli enteritis which is seen in sheep and goats at the rate of 10 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly next for treating the coccidiosis in sheep and goat which is a most common problem we use amprolium we can even use sulfonamides antibiotics like sulfonamides plain sulfonamides or sulfonamides it when it is combined with the trimethoprim at the rate of 15 to 30 mg per kg body weight when we are using plain sulfonamide the dose is high around 200 to 250 mg per kg body weight that can be given orally or parenterally in the sub therapeutic purposes chlorotetracycline it is a fda approved to be used in growing lambs to increase the body weight and the feed efficiency chlorotetracycline is found to have no withdrawal effect in the meat whereas tetracycline oxytetracycline that is teramycin it is used in sheep and goat to treat the enteritis caused by e coli and pneumonia caused by pastrella multocida this is having a meat withdrawal period of 5 days means after giving the injection that meat it should be prohibited for consumption up to 5 to 6 days to prevent the residual effect getting into the body of the human beings these are some of the antimicrobials that are commonly used in sheep and goat farms amoxicillin penicillin group that is am ampicillin at the rate of 10 mg per kg body weight for respiratory infections ceftriaxone for respiratory infections we can use and amoxicillin clavulanic acid this combination of clavulanic acid makes it a broad spectrum that it can be used against those organisms that are producing beta lactamase enzyme next enrofloxacin that is fluoroquinolones oxytetracycline sulfonamides for coccidiosis penicillins sulfonamides in combination with trimethoprim and tylosin that is used for mycoplasma infections that causes mastitis and respiratory infections now coming to what actually this antimicrobial resistance is 
It is the ability of the microorganisms, it can be bacteria, virus, fungi or parasites to withstand the effect of the antibiotics which we are giving at the attainable concentration or at a therapeutic dose, but leading to therapeutic failure means we are giving antibiotics to the antimicrobials for a certain condition, but the animal is not recovering from that condition. It could be because of the wrong administration of the drug or if we are giving correct drug, if the animal is not responding, that means it is because of the antimicrobial resistance that has occurred in the organisms. Here we have two types of resistance, multi-drug resistance. That means those microorganisms that are resistant to one or more antimicrobials, we call them as a multi-drug resistance multi-drug resistance. This we commonly seen in MRSA, multi-drug resistance, Staphylococcus aureus, vancomycin resistant enterococci. When the microorganisms, they are resistant to majority of the antimicrobials which we are using, then we call it as a superbugs. The most commonly seen superbugs in uh, nowadays in sheep and goat farmer, they are the E. coli and the Staphylococcus aureus. This is a graph where we can see a, B, C. A indicates which are the largest five consumers of antimicrobials in 2010. Here, five countries, it is taken highest five countries have been considered, where in the first graph, we are on the fifth position, whereas antimicrobial con consumers, largest five antimicrobial consumers, which is shown in B graph, it shows that India stands in the fourth position. Coming to the largest increase in the antimicrobial consumers consumption projected from 2010 to 2030, we are standing in third position. That means there is an urgency of antimicrobial resistance that need to be combated with the help of necessary steps. This is a graph which projects the antimicrobial death because of the antimicrobial resistance every year by 2050. Next. Now, how this antimicrobial resistance is happening? Whenever an animal or a sheep and goat it is suffering from any infection, it can be gram positive or gram negative. This left side, it shows bacterial population that is residing in the body of an animal. When we give antibiotic to that animal to treat that infection, microorganisms, susceptible microorganisms will be killed with the help of antibiotics but the resistant microorganisms, they will be surviving, which is shown in yellow color. Down figure, we can see this blue shows dead bacteria and yellow shows resistant bacteria. Within a span of time, after a certain period, these resistant mi microorganisms, they get the area or they get, they multiply rapidly and they form their own resistant bacteria. We call it as an antimicrobial resistant organism. So whenever these antimicrobial resistant organisms, they produce infection to an animal. We administer the antibiotics to cure that disease condition, but the animal doesn't respond because these are antimicrobial resistant organisms, not susceptible organisms. Now, what is the main cause of this antimicrobial resistance? One is antibiotic or antimicrobial overuse in livestock. What does that mean? In our country, there is easy, available and higher consumption of antibiotics that has led to the antimicrobial resistance. There is a disproportionate higher use of or inappropriate and over usage of antimicrobials in the sheep and goat farms. Data shows that inappropriate and in, irrational use of these antimicrobial agents against the infectious diseases have led to the increase in the development of antimicrobial resistance nowadays. Nowadays, even in the sheep and goat farms, what farmers will do or the owners will do, if their sheep and goat is showing any symptoms of coughing, sneezing, or a fever, what they will do, they will go to the medical shop and they will purchase the medicines and administer. There is no prescription. Without any prescription, the medicines are made available to the owners that need to be stopped to control this antimicrobial resistance. Next is a patients not finishing the entire course. Sheep and the goat, they'll be brought to the hospitals for any 
clinical condition. So usually the course of the disease of antibiotic is three to five days or seven days we extend in mastitis cases. But in some animals, they show improvement by second or third day of the administration of the antibiotic. So what they will do? Owner will not bring the animal to the hospital because he thinks the infection has been killed out. But because of the improper or not administering the antimicrobial agents for full course leads to this antimicrobial resistance. Next one is a poor hygiene and the sanitation and poor infection control in healthcare settings. In the farming or the farms where sheep and goat are kept, the workers will be working in that area. The hygiene and sanitation plays an import, very important role because they will be cleaning the farms with their bare hands. So whenever they clean the dung or the urine sample or the manure which is produced in the farms, which will be having antibiotic residues in that dung or the urine. So when that get exposed to the humans working in that area, then they consume that along with their hands, contaminated hands, these residues, antibiotic residues, they enter into the body of the human being, leading to transfer of the antimicrobial resistant microorganisms from the farm into the body of the animal, leading to production of the disease condition. When they suffer, they take many antibiotics, but they don't get recovered very fast or very soon. That is because of the antimicrobial resistance. Next, absence of new drugs in the market. Because of the lack of new drugs in the market, the owners or the doctors, we are using repeatedly using the same antibiotics again and again that has led to the antimicrobial resistance. How this antimicrobial resistance is happening inside the microorganisms? Usually, it is of two types. One is natural. When the animal is naturally or genetically resistant to any antimicrobial agent, we call it as a natural antibiotic resistance, or it can be acquired over a period of time or over a period of uh, using antibiotic for a prolonged use. After certain days, the, that antibiotic is found to be ineffective against that disease condition. That resistance, we call it as a acquired resistance. It can be either by chromosomal methods, that is a mutations, or it can be through the extra chromosomal methods with the help of plasmids. This intrinsic resistance, this occurs naturally. It can be because of the impermeability, that is the antibiotic, which is shown in the red color. It is not able to enter the cell, enter the bacterial cell. Because of that, there could be resistance. It is not able to act inside the microorganisms. Or the other reason, it can be modification of the drug target. Inside the bacterial cells, it will be having different drug targets. As we discussed, that it inhibits the protein synthesis. In it, it inhibits the DNA gyrase. These will be the drug targets. When these drug, drug targets, they are modified by the bacteria itself, then this antibiotic that is administered, it will not bind to the target site and it will not produce the effect. Next is a inactivation. By the, whenever an antibiotic we are giving, it enters the bacterial cell, but that bacteria, it is producing enzymes that leads to the inactivation of the antibiotic that we have given from the outside, that is cephalosporinase enzyme, which is seen in Klebsiella infections. One more is an innate efflux pumps. That means whenever the antibiotic it enters into the body of the bacteria, these antimicrobial agents, they are pumped out of the bacterial cell with the help of efflux pumps so that the antibiotic will not show its effect leading to intrinsic resistance. Acquired resistance, that means Previously, when an animal was treated with that antibiotic, it recovered. But after certain days, it is seen that after administering the drug to that animal, it, did, it is not showing any response. That means the anti that means the microorganisms they have acquired the resistance. It occurs over a period of time. It does not occur all of a sudden. It can be with the help of mutations, that is, change in the genome of the nucleotide in that bacteria. It usually happens at a frequency of one per 10 million cells, which is usually uh, seen in organisms like mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium leprae, and 
multi drug resistant staphylococcus aureus here the resistant or the mutant microorganisms they are less susceptible to the antimicrobials that are being administered the other is the through the extra chromosomal method that is plasmids the bacteria that will be having the plasmids in that mix they will be having plasmids when the resistant gene they get inserted into the plasmids resistant genes gets inserted into this round plasmids we call it as a plasmid carrying resistant gene when this plasmid carrying resistant gene it comes in contact with the microorganisms which are present in that in their media or in that area they transfer this resistant plasmid carrying the resistant gene into that bacteria making that bacteria also antimicrobial resistant when this transfer occurs from one bacteria to the other bacteria we call it as a horizontal gene transfer whenever this bacteria which is having the plasmid with the resistant gene when it multiplies it transfers its plasmid having the resistant gene to the daughter cells also that type of transmission we call it as a vertical gene transfer how this transfer of genes occur that is mainly through conjugation transduction and transformation conjugation when there is a formation of pilus or a junction between the adjacent bacteria and the plasmids or the resistant genes are transfer from resistant to the susceptible bacteria we call it as a conjugation transduction when the naked dna which is having the resistant gene that is present in the media it is getting absorbed into the bacterial cell wall this transfer of resistant genes between the plasmids within the bacterium can happen with the help of transposons or introgons which will be discussing in the next slides this conjugation it is the most common method by which the spread of resistant gene is happening as i told it is with the help of formation of a connecting tube or a pilus between the two bacteria transduction which is seen in staphylococcus and streptococcus organisms transformation where in which the dna from the environment it is picked up by the bacteria within the bacterium there will be transfer of genes resistant genes with the help of transposomes uh, they are the sequences of the dna that can move around different positions within the genome of a single cell and they can replicate during the co interaction between both plasmids then separate and each contains the transposomes so two plasmids will have the resistant gene inside that that will be transferred to the susceptible bacteria interrogans it is a large mobile dna that can spread the multi drug resistance this each interrogan it is packed with multiple gene cassettes which is having where each gene is having the resistant gene attached to a some recognition site these genes encode the several bacterial functions including resistance and virulence also they cannot promote self transfer these are some of the biochemical mechanisms of antibiotic resistance that can happen because of the prevention of the drug admin accumulation in the bacterium or by producing in the enzyme that in inactivates the activity of the antibiotic use of alternative pathways for metabolic or growth requirements and the other is a modification or protection of the target site the new one is a quorum sensing this is the type of this is a method by which the different bacteria communicate to with each other for the transfer of the resistance from one bacteria to the another here we can see that is efflux pumps where the antibiotic that comes into the cell via the porons they enter into the cell inside the cell but these antibiotics they are pumped out of the bacterial cell this type of activity is shown by microorganisms like e coli pseudomonas originosa staph aureus some of the microorganisms they produce antibiotics that inactivates the activity of the antibiotic like staphylococcus aureus they produce they causes the inactivation of the beta lactam antibiotics mainly penicillins next is inactivation of the chloramphenicol by chloramphenicol acetyl transferase which is shown by gram positive and gram negative bacteria inactivation of some of the aminoglycosides like gentamicin 
neomycin that is shown by it is inactivated by acetyl phosphoine adenylate transferases that are present in gram positive and gram negative bacterium here we can see how this antibiotic inactivation is happening this red color they are the target sites to which the antibiotics get binded whereas this green color they are the antibiotics and pink color they are the enzyme binding to these are the enzymes that get bound to the antibiotics here in the next we can see antibiotic that is bounded with the enzyme in the third we can see that there is a destruction of the antibiotic by this enzyme that is being bound to that antibiotic leading to no antibiotic effect the next is a quorum sensing this antimicrobials they communicate with each other and produce antimicrobial resistant gene transfer from one bacterium to the another bacterium there are certain chemical substances that are produced by both gram positive and gram negative organisms we call them as a auto inducers the chemical substances are called auto inducers the, when these auto inducers they enter into the bacterium that is susceptible to the antibiotic there will be transfer of these auto inducers from the antimicrobial resistant bacteria to the antimicrobial susceptible bacteria by which these auto inducers they get bound to the quorum sensing targets and they are induced or they get bound to the dna of the susceptible bacteria leading to the transfer of antimicrobial resistant gene from the resistant to the susceptible bacteria via this quorum sensing these are nothing but the chemical mediators used for communication in between the bacteria we are saying multi drug resistant staphylococcus aureus penicillin was uh, was discovered in the year 1928 but against staphylococcus aureus but that resistant occurred during 1915 within a span of uh, 22 years we found penicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus further in 1970s that staphylococcus aureus was further resistant to methicillin we call it as a methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus next is a vancomycin resistant enterococci which evolved in the year 1990s further following in 1997 we got staphylococcus aureus that was vancomycin in intermediate resistant followed by complete resistant to the vancomycin by staphylococcus aureus was obtained by 2002 this is how drug resistance is happening in this table we can see some of the antimicrobial agents by which mechanism they are obtaining resistance or a single antibiotic or a single and microorganisms they can attain this resistance via different mechanisms like beta lactam antibiotics amino glycosides tetracyclines glycopeptides they are getting the resistant mechanism via modification of the drug uptake next is inactivation of the drug which is shown by beta lactams and chloramphenicol antibiotics active drug efflux it is shown towards tetracyclines and fluoroquinolones these are the different mechanisms by which resistance is happening now the one more concept that helps in the transfer of this resistant gene to environment or to human beings or to other young ones or kids of the sheep and goat is through the antibiotic residues these are the residues the, they are the substances that are produced in the animal products after treatment it there is a certain period it can be in hours days or months during that period after administration of the drug the meat or the milk from the treated animal should be avoided for consumption we call that period as a withdrawal period that has to be followed very strictly the antimicrobial resistance that is happening nowadays the one more reason for this it can be because of the lack of knowledge or the financial burden to because of this antimicrobial residues whenever the animal is suffering with a mastitis after giving parenteral or intramammary antibiotic usually that milk is not fit for consumption because it will be having antimicrobial residues but the owner cannot wait because there will be financial loss so he will give that milk to the sellers for consumption that will be having antibiotic residue from that animal the residues will be transferred in the milk and consumed by the humans by this way the resistant bacteria 
they get transferred through the antibiotic residues. Uh, this is one graph where we can see this was conducted in a sheep farm where there was regular use of antibiotics. When they tested for antibiotic residues in the, in the sheep meat, it was found that there was a higher concentration of fluoroquinolones followed by tetracyclines and beta-lactams. It can be because of the rigorous or common use of these antibiotics in the field, leading to the accumulation of these antimicrobial residues in the muscles of the different animals. In this table, we can see some of the drugs that are used to treat mastitis in sheep and goat, where the administration of the drug is through intramammary route. And this is the withdrawal period. It is 60 hours for amoxicillin, 48 hours for ampicillin, floxacillin, 48 hours, gentamicin is 90 hours. For this period, the milk consumption should be prohibited from the affected or the treated animal. Some of the drugs that are given parenterally, sulfonamides was given orally for a period of 12 days. Here we can see the withdrawal period, both in the milk and the meat. Ceftiofer is the only antibiotic that is found to have no withdrawal effect, both in meat and milk. So that means it is safe to use in sheep and goats. Amoxicillin, it had withdrawal period in the milk of 120 hours, whereas sulfonamides, which was given to treat coccidiosis for a period it was given prolonged used prolonged for 12 days which showed withdrawal period in the meat of sulfonamide showed for 12 days whereas in the milk it was five days tylosin it showed withdrawal period in the meat of 30 days and 96 hours and in milk withdrawal period it's very important to combat this antimicrobial resistant or to fight against this antimicrobial resistant because whenever an antibiotic is used in animals to treat or for prophylactic measures these antibiotic residues they are produced in both meat and the milk so for each drug withdrawal period should be noted by the veterinarian before using and the same message should be conveyed to the owners to prohibit the use of the meat and the milk for these many days when they are using these particular antibiotics. This is a residual limit, maximum residual limit, which is expressed in microgram per kg. Different antibiotics that was used in sheep and goat, whereas the tissues were extracted, were taken, muscle, liver, kidney, and fat from the treated animals, and they were checked for the maximum residual limit. What is the maximum residual limit for that antibiotic? In sheep, it was found that amoxicillin had a uh, maximum residual limit for amoxicillin in sheep muzzle was 50 microgram per kg, whereas in milk, it was 4 microgram per liter of the milk. In tetracyclines, which are used in sheep very commonly, here the maximum residual limit in the milk is 100 microgram per liter of the milk. This should be kept in mind. So whenever the product is coming for evaluation, if the product is crossing these limits, then it is unfit for consumption by the humans. Now, how to find this antimicrobial resistance in sheep and goats or other livestock species? We have to find the susceptibility. What is the antimicrobial susceptibility status of that antibiotic? Then we can know the how much resistant it is to that antibiotic. Some of the methods are phenotypic molecular and mass spectroscopy. Phenotypic, it is very time consuming. It gives a result after four, uh, up to 24 to 48 hours. Whereas a molecular based techniques, this helps in the identification of the antimicrobial resistant genes. It can be taken up to a time of several hours to 24 to 48 hours. Next, mass spectroscopy. It is we, uh, commonly done test is MALDI-TOF, that is a, with the help of mass spectroscopy, where the proteins or the bacterial proteins, they're identified for the antibiotic or the resistant susceptible bacteria. In the dilution method, we call it as a tube dilution method. This is commonly used to, to determine the MIC and MBC of the drug disc diffusion technique, where on the muller Hindenagar, the sample whether it is a milk sample or uh, nasal secretions or whatever. And in endometritis uh, cases, uterine discharges, they are plated on the plate, petri plates, 
in the muller hindunagar and they are incubated after in incubated for the growth along with that antibiotic disc are placed on that this helps to know what is the susceptibility of that sample to that particular antibiotic next is a gradient test this is also called as a epsilometer that is a e test that detects the antibiotic resistant or the susceptibility of the microorganisms and the chromogenic media that helps in the isolation identification and differentiation of the different bacteria from the homogeneous medium of organisms so the basic principle for treating any animal with the antimicrobial agent should be after doing the antimicrobial susceptibility testing so that a narrow spectrum antibiotic or a particular antibiotic against that organism will be administered and the case can be treated successfully instead of using broad spectrum antibiotics and not getting the results now how this antimicrobial resistant genes that are produced in the livestock farm sheep or the goat farm they get into the they reach the humans one whenever these antimicrobial resistant bacteria that are present in the livestock waste they get discharged into the soil into the environment mainly surface water soil or ground water and into the air and through that the when these resistant bacteria they come in contact with the susceptible bacteria that are present in the environment they transfer these resistant genes in the green color which is having the plasmids this will be resistant gene it will be transmitted to the susceptible bacteria that is present in the environment by conjugation transformation and transduction which we discussed previously and from these things they will be made assess and from these environment they get assess into the humans both non pathogenic and the human pathogen harboring antibiotic resistant genes will be accumulated will enter into the human beings or the gut of the human beings via water consumption food ingestion or inhalation that is contaminated food and water and inhalation leads to the spread of antibiotic resistant gene from the environment to the humans it leads to the production of the disease in the human beings in the human beings the major side effect or the consequence of this anti transfer of antimicrobial resistant gene is prolonged hospitality and cost of treatment will be very high because of the longer duration of treatment this is one course by which human can directly get exposed to the antibiotic resistant gene or the other is through the occupational exposure as i uh, explained before that workers which are working in the farm they get exposed to the contaminants through the livestock waste and they get entered into the gut and leads to the production of the infection this is transfer of antibiotic resistance from farm to the table where animals will be treated for any infection where the bacteria it will kill the all the susceptible bacteria but the resistant bacteria present in the organism they keep on multiplying and whatever antibiotics we give they will not respond to the uh, antibiotic and they will be keep on multiplying multiplication of the resistant bacteria this resistant bacteria they get transferred they get or they spread to humans via animal products which we commonly use milk and meat which are used for consumption to contaminated water or the soil and the food products that are Uh, prepared without proper washing and all from these sources we get exposed or the humans get exposed to the antimicrobial residues or the antimicrobial resistant gene that are present in the milk and the meat without proper sanitation this leads to the production of the mild illness or severe illness that can even lead to death in the human beings these are some of the consequences of antimicrobial resistance when there is haphazard or indiscriminate use of the antibiotics in the sheep and goat or other livestock farms there will be production of killing of the susceptible bacteria leading to the survival of the resistant bacteria because of that it leads to the major four consequences are poor health and slow recovery of the patient as i told increased cost of the income and there are chances of moving towards the post antibiotic effect or era where common effect, infections become fatal we can see this in the future if we are using the antibiotics without any discrimination or indiscriminate use leads to 
post antibiotic era means simple cold and cough can be treated with simple paracetamol or anti microbial agents but the same simple cough and cold cannot be treated in future because of this anti microbial resistance next is increased social cost of the patient and the nation there will be increase in the money that is to be spent on the hospitality leading to the prolonged hospitalization if it is a mild that can be treated if it is severe that it then it can even lead to the death of the patient nowadays antimicrobial resistance it is one of the growing public health concern which is seen worldwide and now it is regarded as one of the critical one health issue which is one of the most prevailing one health concept many of the uh, countries developed countries they have implemented national action plans to uh, fight with this antimicrobial resistance but uh, developing countries like india they are we are still we are, uh, have formed the national action policies that are being followed then one health concept it is a link between the human animal and the environment to achieve a better community health and well being one health concept here it is a it is nothing but a interdisciplinary and holistic concept that is between the interdependent human and animal health in association with the ecosystem that means one health it covers all the three concepts of animal health human health and the environmental health antimicrobial uh, stewardship it is nothing but it is a coordinated program that promotes the appropriate use of the antimicrobial agents and it even improves the patient outcome uh, this antimicrobial stewardship it is uh, being formed to reduce the antimicrobial resistance and decrease the spread of the infection caused by multi drug or the super bugs this is one of the driving force that can be used to combat or control this antimicrobial resistance that is being developed in the Uh, that is being getting developed in india coming to one by one concept there are 10 concepts that needs to be focused one is minimizing the source of infection we have to identify what is the main source of infection to an animal and we should prevent the exposure of animal sheep and goat to that source of infection this is one how we can prevent the Uh, infection or a disease condition in the animal next is prescribing antimicrobials when only when needed what i told in sheep and goat farmers or the day, uh, animal farmers what they are doing they are seeing the symptoms they are going to the medical shops or the pharmacists they are purchasing the medicines and giving the treatment on their own and when the animal does not respond they bring the animal to the doctors veterinary doctors or the hospitals by which the time between the disease and the administration of the treatment there it will be prolonged it will lead to there are two chances if such things happen one there will be production of the antimicrobial residues and the treatment given to that animal will be delayed that can even lead to the death of the animal next is selecting antimicrobials rationally with precise dosage schedule this dosage is very important the antibiotics need to be given according to the dose that is given for that particular drug indiscriminate veterinarians usually administer the drug according to the dosage but the practice by para veterinarians that they give the antibiotics without any dosage forms that lead that is leading to the antibiotic or antimicrobial resistance that needs to be counteracted antimicrobials prescribing for a brief or evidence next is reassessment of the prescribed antimicrobials after culture and sensitivity report it is better to always administer the drug after doing the antimicrobial sensitivity test but the drawback is the results they will be obtained after 24 to 48 hours with till that time owner or the animal cannot wait so that the antimicrobials will be administered so better this antimicrobial sensitivity test should be conducted every 1 to 2 years to know what is the status of the antimicrobial susceptibility in that farm then upholding surveillance of antimicrobial resistance and healthcare 
associated infections. That means here surveillance, it is one of the essential tool to inform the policies and inform whatever the prevention and the control measures responses which we are getting with these activities. It is a cornerstone. We can say surveillance is a cornerstone to prevent the spread of the antimicrobial resistance. So the surveillance in that area or in that district, it should be conducted periodically. Then monitoring the antimicrobial consumption. There should be a monitoring unit in any, in every veterinary hospitals or institutes, or it should be managed by a pharmacist. It can give us a record that what, which are the most commonly used antibiotics and to which species. Then regular educational intervention among health professionals that is very much needed uh, so that these health camps should be arranged by both human and veterinarians to educate the animal, uh, to educate the humans, then promoting interdisciplinary strategy with the help of pharmacists, veterinarians and human doctors, improving the infection prevention and control program. This is very important. Because when we prevent the infection by either vaccination or controlling and minimizing the source of infection, if we prevent the disease, then there is no question of using the antimicrobials and no question of arising the antimicrobial resistance. So these are the 10 points that need to be kept uh, in mind and followed to fight this antimicrobial resistance. Now to combat this antimicrobial resistance, along with the antimicrobial stewardship, we need to follow some other things like vaccinations. The owner should be advised for proper vaccination against clostridial infections, ET, and rhetoxemia, which is most common, against PPR, which is given when the kids are at the age of four months. They should be informed to opt for regular vaccination, which helps in the prevention of such diseases, thus leading to the stoppage of inappropriate use of the antibiotics. Next is diagnostic laboratory and surveillance. The diagnostic laboratory, whichever now it is available, uh, like ABST or broth dilution method, epsilometer, what we discussed, these need to be utilized efficiently to know which antibiotic is sensitive to that microorganism and to be used accordingly. Better to use narrow spectrum antibiotics rather than broad spectrum antibiotics by knowing the cause of the disease condition. Next is antimicrobial awareness, perceptions and education campaigns, regular health camps or information should be dissipated, dissipated to the owners regarding this antimicrobial resistance, how it spreads from animals to the humans. They should be made aware to fight against this antimicrobial resistance. What are the alternative methods to fight against this antimicrobial therapy? We are administering antimicrobials for treatment and subtherapeutic doses also for the gaining weight and proper growth. The, this can be replaced with the help of other alternatives like probiotics. Probiotics, they are the substances that are produced by the microorganisms which are used to enhance the gut or promote the gut microbiota. The most commonly used probiotics in sheep goat farm, they comes in combination of lactic acid or saccharomyces, bacillus subtilis, aspergillus or isa. These are some of the probiotics that comes in combination that needs to be administered to the uh, sheep and goat. These antibiotics, how they work? They promote, they improve the feed digestibility and the gut health. And they even play an important role in producing the natural immunity, which minimizes the use of antimicrobial substances. Uh, probiotics and prebiotics, they are found to have some immunomodulatory effect also. Next, prebiotics. Prebiotics, they are of the plant origin. They support the gut microbiota. Whenever it is administered to an animal, it is not digested by the bacteria until it reaches the largest intestine or the cecum where there are large number of bacteria, microdata that are present in that the gut microdata which are present in the 
cecum or the large intestine. They feed on these prebiotics that are plant extracts and they help in the growth of the gut microbiota that leads to the improvement in the feed digestibility along with the gut health that ultimately leads to the healthy animal. This prebiotic and probiotic, they increases the production of the animal and even they increase the rumen fermentation. Next is organic acids, which are obtained from the tea tree oil and all. Phytochemicals. Phytochemicals is nothing but the practice of the ethno-veterinary medicine, which is used as most common alternative to the antimicrobial therapy that we can use. There are many of the plant substances that are found to be very effective against the many gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. Some of the plant extracts which are containing flavonoids, saponins, they are found to have the antimicrobial and uh, antioxidant effect that helps to fight against the infection. Next is a vaccination. Vaccine. Some of the organism-specific vaccines are available which we can give and prevent the infection. Next is the immunomodulators. Immune modulators, it involves usage of vitamins, minerals like vitamin E, which is having a immunomodulatory effect, selenium, minerals to be included in the diet of the animal. Next, next is the bacteriophages. They are nothing but the viruses, phases that are specific against specific bacteria. These phase bacteria, they can be given parenterally to the animal. Uh, in some of the studies, it is found that whenever it is given parenterally, E. coli infections, they are decrease in the, uh, they, they notice a decrease in the E. coli infections when they treated the animals with the bacteriophages. They, but they are specific to specific organisms. These are some of the anti-alternatives which we can use control the infections caused by gram-positive and gram-negative organisms to fight against antimicrobial resistance. Now, coming to the conclusion, I would like to conclude my topic of antimicrobial resistance with a note that antimicrobial resistant infections, they affect sheep and goat as it affects other livestock species. It is one of the important concern for public health authorities at global level because it is having interlinked between animal health, human health, and the environmental health, leading to a concept of one health that needs to be fought together. With the alarming increase in the antimicrobial resistance, it is imperative that we find ways to combat these pathogens with the help of uh, alternative techniques like bacteriophages, and some of the quorum sensing inhibitors are also we are using. In some of the studies, they show that garlic extract, it is known to have quorum sensing inhibiting effect via saponins and flavonoids. Then preventing infections through good milking practices, vaccine use, and using diagnostic technique to know the susceptibility pattern of the pathogens which are affecting the herd health. They are very crucial in fighting the infections, including the resistant infections. And whenever in the field we are using antimicrobials, we should use it very judiciously. There is a common practice in foreign that they administer the antimicrobials to the leg of the livestock, beef animals, or the muscles in which the antimicrobials are administered. They are prohibited for consumption. Similarly, for the sheep and goat, we should practice for administering the antibiotics mainly in the neck region because those muscles, they are usually avoided for the consumption. When we administer the antibiotics in the leg muscles that will have much of the antibiotic residues that are unfit for the consumption when and produces side effects when they are consumed by the humans. And always uh, we need to remember that synergistic and antagonistic effect and bactericidal should be given with the sidal to get the synergistic effect. They should not be mixed with each other whenever we are treating for mastitis, parenteral or uh, along with the intramammary therapy. This principle should be remembered.